Okay, so where do we start? Well, let's go and have a look at the industry interface. We can either do that by looking at the production, but I'm just going to look at the pure and simple numbers with the intelligence screen first of all on the industry resource availability. And here we can see basically our inputs and outputs, things that we'll need to have a grasp on as the game progresses. There is another place that we can access most of the information, and it's a great addition, uh, and is the industry management screen, which actually show, shows you uh, many of the things that you, you require. So what we can look at down the bottom here is basically our, our global information that we saw in the, in the previous screen. Uh, it's looking about our pools, so this, mean, this means the points that we have available for each of these things. Our maximum production, our actual production, so if one is different from the other, we know that there has been a problem with either resources or fuel or, um, or our heavy industry uh, has had some problem during the previous turn. Uh, down the bottom here we've got uh, the requirement of each uh, that we need, so if we look at our HI, our heavy industry here, we need uh, 13,900 uh, fuel and we need uh, 139,000 uh, resources each turn, uh, and this will produce uh, 13,900 um, supply. So this is a, a fairly uh, static way of, of looking at it. There is one other way, and of course that's through Wit Tracker, which I'm going to show you how to look at the screen right now and explain exactly what what takes place. Okay, so you've set up Tracker and have everything uh, working okay. Okay, so you must remember that you should set up your region files, so import base uh, region definitions. So I just clicked on that. And you'll note that there's a mapping regions, and in here there's Coles uh, region file, which basically has uh, Japan all grouped together except for Hokkaido. Uh, then, then there are two by Nomad. The, the four file is for uh, games that haven't been patched up to the recent, recent edition, whereas five is for the new ones. I'm going to use Culls for now because it makes it simple uh, for you to understand. Okay, open that. Overwrite. Okay, and basically the import is complete. So what we want to look at is uh, our industry screen here. This will give us basically the same information that you saw on the uh, in the game, uh, but what I want to do is go over to the chart and discuss with you the inputs and the outputs of uh, of industry. So uh, on our uh, left hand side here we have resource centers, we have manpower centers, oil centers, uh, and they are basically our our three inputs into the into the equation. Manpower is only used when creating new industry or for tr uh, LCUs, whereas resources and oil uh, are much more important. And the byproduct of that being fuel is also very important as well. So our resource centers, let's have a look at what the screen is telling us. It's telling us that we have 1,380 resource centers that we have captured at present. So each of these resource center centers is going to uh, produce 20 times that amount. So, 1, 000, oh, sorry, 13,830 times 20 is 276,000, sorry, 600 uh, resources created each turn. So, our resources plus and minus. Well, resources are used either in light industry or heavy industry. Uh, Heavy industry, it's used at the rate of a multiplier of 15. So because we have 9,340 light industry, uh, times 15 equals 140,100. So that's the amount of resources that are going to be used by light industry each turn. Down here, heavy industry, we have 6,950 heavy industry. And the multiplier here is 20. So that number times uh, 20 equals 139,000 uh, resources which will be consumed by the heavy industry each time. So this number here which is our input into the system and these two here which are our outputs means that there's a shortfall of uh, 2,500 resources. So 
while it's not a big problem initially, eventually we're going to need to uh, capture uh, some more resource centres uh, so that we can uh, get out of this deficit. At the moment you can see that we have plenty of resources on on hand but obviously if we uh, if we left that for the whole game then our resources would dwindle quite quickly. Let's have a look at the other side of the equation now. So oil centres, we have at the moment only two, 224 oil centres. The multiplier here is times 10 so that means that there are 2,240 uh, oil points going each time, uh, each turn. This oil uh, is used by refineries. Now our refineries once again luckily use it at a, at a multiplier of 10 so we have 1,035 oil refineries. So that basically means that uh, we're using 10,350 uh, oil points. So obviously because this number is bigger than this number we have a deficit of 8,110 oil points per turn. So that's one of the main reasons why we have to go and capture the uh, southern resource areas uh, because we'll need oil eventually to feed this industry. So our oil refineries, what they do is, uh, is they, first of all, they create supply, so 1,035 supply. Yeah. Uh, then if we move down to fuel, okay, fuel is used by task force as well as by heavy industry. So our oil refinery creates fuel and it does that at a rate of or a multiplier of 9. So 1,035 times 9 equals 9,315. Now our heavy industry once again, which is our most important uh, which is the most important thing to consider. Uh, it has 6,950 heavy industry, so the multiplier is times two, so that will be uh, 13,900. So that number there minus that number there equals minus 4,585 fuel points. So basically what we have at the moment is uh, an economy which is uh, not in equilibrium and in fact if we have a look at our report in the beginning here, our notes, it says that it's limited by oil, oil centres, 811, limited by resource centres, 125 and limited by oil refineries, uh, five, 509. Okay, so basically I'll come back to the, the chart again and have a look once again at our heavy industry. So our heavy industry is creating supply as well as heavy industry points. Our heavy industry points are used to produce things. Our, our supply output is times two, so it will be 13,900 supply into here. Once again our light industry, it, supply, it creates supply at times one, so 9,340 9, plus 13,900 plus 1,035 equals our supply, 24,275 supply created each turn. Okay, I know I'm moving quite quickly, but uh, we'll now move down towards the, uh, the HI, HI points used. So if we look down here, okay, we can see that uh, airframes, engines, vehicles, armament, naval yards and merchant yards all use HI heavy industry points to create, uh, to develop the wheels of war. Okay, so if, let's have a look at our merchant yard to start with. Both merchant and navy use points at times three. So because there are 1,384 uh, naval points, uh, naval yards, sorry, this is not repair yards, this is just naval yards. Uh, that times three equals 4,152. Our merchant yard, 807 times three equals 2,421. Over at armament, both our armament and vehicles are quite expensive. They're times six, so that times six equals that, that times six equals that. Over to our engines and airframes. 
Okay, so uh, our engines. The uh, the thing you have to think about here is that it's uh, not just the number of engines. Okay, so that times 18 would obviously be a lot bigger, but it's that times 18 divided by 30 because there's 30 days in a month. So that's what it creates per turn because it doesn't create 443 engines per turn. Uh, it creates 14 engines per turn now, which is uh, slightly more complicated. Uh, it's the same principle as engines except for that airframes are based on the number of engines that the plane actually uses. So say if you have a uh, one engine fighter, uh, it will cost 18 heavy industry points to make. Um, whereas a two engine will cost 36, a four engine will cost 72. Uh, so once again down here, this is the number of building, but obviously that's monthly figure. So that uh, has, I've, sorry, I've programmed it such that uh, it does all the calculations for you. So you can basically believe that uh, 309 uh, heavy industry points are going to be used each turn. So this is the total uh, output. This is the total input. So we should be getting about an aggregate of 2,614 heavy industry points per turn. Obviously, um, not everything can be accounted for, and uh, this is not looking into this is looking into the future rather than uh, looking at the past. So uh, sometimes you'll you'll find that there are slight uh, differences because of the random nature of production. The last thing to look at here is pilot training, uh, which is for Japanese only. Anyway, so at the end of the first month, on the first day of the first month. Um, this, uh, the training of pilots, 3,902 pilots which are in training, um, it will cost 19,510 heavy industry points. So that's something that uh, needs to be considered as well. Uh, once again, if you, if you don't have enough points available, what it will do is suck your heavy industry points dry, and then uh, for the remaining pilots, uh, they won't actually progress, or the, their experience won't won't increase during that time. Okay, so that's the the basic nature of of, uh, of production. Obviously, you can see everything that I have graphically here. If I come back to, sorry. Uh, if I come graphically back to here, you can see that it's actually the same as this here. So you don't really need tracker in the sense of that, but obviously uh, because I make both, <coughs> both these tutorials and, and tracker, I want to show you both. Uh, and I find it a lot easier to read than, than reading this. <coughs> Eventually though, um, what I will do is make sure that uh, that I've got the actual production figures coming through, and I'm hoping to do that with uh, 1.5 uh, tracker. Okay, so and so similar to um, what we just saw in the, the screen before uh, in AE, I can do the same thing in my overview panel and look at the bases that have um, airframes in them. I can look at where my light industry is, where my refineries are, where my armament factories are. So that's the basic way of getting around Tracker. Obviously though, the things that we, we really should concentrate on are oil and resources and supply and fuel. So in our oil and resources area, uh, you'll note that uh, my regions have been broken up into these different regions. So Japan includes most of the islands except for Hokkaido. Um, we have Sakhalin down there as well, and then the, uh, the rest of the Japanese islands. But it's really Japan that we're looking at primarily. So uh, our differences per day, this is the figure that's the most important to us. So what it basically means is that um, Japanese Japan is not producing uh, enough oil. Uh, so we could either capture okay so looking at the oil and resource screen 
uh, we can notice that uh, we have oil stored here, oil produced. This is by our production centers that are actually on Jap in Japan. Uh, and we can look at those by by looking at the uh, the the oil centers down here, and we can see them by looking at the oil centers down here. Um, oh, sorry. Or just by uh, looking here and seeing that. Uh, actually, I don't have oil centers down here. Okay, oil produced. So that's from our oil pro, um, production centers in on the on the Japanese mainland. Um, uh, oil use. Well, our oil once again that went to towards refineries, um, and then the difference per day. So it's telling me that there are 357 days left of oil in Japan, which is a reasonable amount of time, but obviously something that we need to concern ourselves with eventually. Um, over here, resources stored, produced, resources used. These are used by light industry and heavy industry once again, and our difference per day, which is around about 79,000 resources per day. So we only have 60 days left of supply of resources. So it's fairly imperative that we uh, that we bring in at least that amount of resources per day. Obviously, though, uh, for good players, you, you're looking at, at doing more than that just because uh, we know that, you know, as you get into 1943, 1944, that uh, you need actually to have a surplus of, of resources to keep your heavy industry going. Okay, so where do we get this oil from, where do we get these resources from? Well, the easy way to do that is we can look at uh, where our resources are stored. So I can uh, sort on this and we can see that Manchuria and Hokkaido and Korea have quite a large number of resources. So these are basically going to be the, our areas where we're going to um, take our resources and uh, ferry them across by, by task force uh, to Japan. So if we look here, the, we're down about 79,000. So if we, if we look at uh, maybe a couple of these, um, Sakhalin, Indochina, China, Korea, Hokkaido, and uh, Manchuria, uh, that should give us enough to feed uh, Japanese industry. Oil, once again, uh, oil produced. So at the moment uh, we can we can grab some oil from Hokkaido, uh, Sakhalin, Korea, Manchuria and Formosa again. Um, oh actually Manchuria you don't want to because well you can 